Well, hello again everybody. Well today I really do have a, a thing of beauty to show you and uh, we're going to be doing another internal examination. It's a bore gauge and it's used for measuring the inside of cylinder bores very accurately. It's probably not true to say it can measure things, it's actually a comparator. What it'll allow you to do is, if you actually know what the, uh, the bore of a cylinder should be, what you can do is you compare the reading that it should be to what it actually is and you can get a, an incredibly accurate measurement. I think that this uh, tool, if used correctly, is probably a lot more accurate than uh, some of the other techniques that we've been using or attempting to use. So the main reading part of the instrument consists of this dial test indicator and this one is marked in divisions which are 0.001mm and it's also got the manufacturer's name on it which is Diatest. I think these may be made in Germany but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. There doesn't seem to be a lot of information and there isn't any instructions on how to operate it. So I have done a little bit of playing with it and I think I've kind of figured it out but um, yeah, not exactly. So I can actually just remove this from here and uh, if I press that plunger down, you can see the uh, little needle whizzes down. So inside this long rod, which is basically just uh, just a handle, we've got another long rod that runs inside here, and it presses against the uh, the tip of the probe. So I'll just put that back on there. And I think every time you uh, you use this, you've got to do a little bit of tinkering and setting up. So we've got the dial at one end and then this is an effectively a handle. So the length of the handle here depends on the depth of the bore you want to measure. Um, this is what it comes with as standard so I'm just going to leave that on today. And then it comes with a number of different heads so uh, let's get them out. So here we've got one, two, three different heads and uh, I think they all basically do exactly the same thing but depending on the size of the bore that you're trying to measure you have to use the appropriate size head so this would be used for uh, a small bore and this one would be used to measure uh, a large bore now I think the part that we're going to measure is relatively large so what we do is we, uh, we screw this onto here and you can see that there's a little uh, plunger here and I'm guessing what must happen is when I press this plunger what happens is it, it, tra it transfers or it changes this uh, the motion which is, I don't know, let's call it horizontal, it changes the horizontal motion into uh, a vertical motion up this shaft and it presses on the bottom of the, uh, the dial test indicator so in theory when I press this button in down here this little needle will wang round. So I'm just going to press this plunger up and down and that has the effect of uh, making the gauge go round. Now within this box it came with uh, all these different adapters and extenders. So the measurement would be from the pointy bit here to the back. But obviously bores come in all sizes and shapes and the measurement range of this device is actually pretty tiny. It's just fractions of a millimetre of, well not fractions, maybe a few millimetres movements on this plunger. What you might actually do, if you want to uh, measure a bigger bore, you actually have to screw on things like um, these extender pieces so if you were trying to measure I don't know uh, maybe a big truck engine or something like that to actually fit the bore you'd probably screw on um, an extender so now the measuring surface is from there to this tip if it's a much smaller bore you want to measure we just we can unscrew this polished end from here and just screw on the anvil on the back of here and now we've got a much reduced uh, bore size because now the bore size will be from there to there so it's quite a comprehensive kit here I'm just looking at some of the instructions that come with it it looks like with these various adapters we can measure anywhere between uh, 26 0.3 millimetres and it goes all the way over here to 330 millimetres. Now we've got this little chart on here and I've got to admit I've struggled with it. What I think this chart is trying to tell you is what size of adapter. So we've got a list of adapters here. We've got A, B um, and then we've got all these numbers. So that's so the A letters are referring to these little uh, little tools, sorry, these little extenders that screw onto the end of the anvil. So 
A is 10 millimetres, whereas C is the longest, is 40. Um, actually, there is a longer one, that's the one we used before, that's even longer, I think, I don't know what that is. But what this chart is trying to tell you, that depending on the bore you want to measure, so this one here, it says for measuring a bore, a bore between 46 and 48.5, you need B and 1. So you would take this little anvil out there and you would take B out screw these together so we then take our little adapter assembler and we just screw it on to the back here and in theory this should now be set up to the uh, the measuring range that we require but I have to admit um, I've tried that and I've followed, well like I say it doesn't come with instructions, I've looked at people using similar equipment online and uh, whatever range of adapters I seem to be screwing on here it bears no resemblance to the actual measuring range. So there's obviously some trick to this that I haven't quite figured out. Maybe I'm using the, uh, the wrong size head or something like that. Again going back to the chart it says there's a, I don't know, M6 here and M8 and I'm not sure what the M6 or the M8 refers to. I don't think there's any uh, numbers on here, or none that I've found. I kind of wondered if maybe, uh, I don't know, the, the big head was maybe the M8 head, and maybe one of the smaller ones was an M6 head or something like that. And uh, I kind of think that maybe that's the way it works, but I haven't managed to uh, <laughs> figure that out yet, so uh, a little bit of work in progress. So with our number one and B adapter screwed on, we should have between 46 and 48.5 millimetres, but um, I'm nothing like that. This gap between the anvils is um, it's about 100 mil. So I need to figure something out there. Maybe we can go and have another look at these charts. And if you can figure it out, shout it out. So I was measuring about 100 mil there, so uh, 100 mil. Well, it says to measure somewhere around 100 mil. We should be using AC and zero. Well, I don't think I was using them. I wonder if that is. Um, I wonder if this chart does coincide with this head. As I say, there's no markings on it. A lot of the equipment's actually got little things stamped on it, like that has got the A stamped on it, so you know it comes from there. Okay, let's. Uh, we're just watching and learning together now. So now we've got B and B and 1. Let's just look what B and 1 does. Okay, yeah, B and 1 on this one is 46 to 48. So does is that anything like that? And what I would say is no, that doesn't make any sense either because I'm in the uh, I'm in the 70s again. So there's uh, there's something I obviously don't understand that I'm not quite doing right here. I'm kind of wondering if these heads maybe don't belong to this set, although they do seem to fit the box, or what it is I'm doing wrong. Again, the little picture here shows uh, two types of end on here. Um, it shows one with um, a flat end, and one with, it looks like, a, a ball end. Well, I'm pretty sure these have got ball ends on them. Ah, maybe this is making a little bit of sense now. Maybe I was reading this chart wrong, but if you're using these ball end heads for, for measuring between 46 and 45, maybe it's actually just one I need. So let's have a go at that. Well, I'm floundering a bit. That's certainly a lot closer. I'm kind of measuring 49 now, but obviously I'm just holding these tools in my hand and I might not be measuring it correctly. So that looks, um, it looks closer, but it still doesn't look exactly right. Now if anybody's used one of these bore gauges before and is familiar with these reading these charts and the accessories that come with it, please leave it in your uh, comments because I haven't managed to find um, a set quite like this. I think the original manufacturer was this company Diatest and it does look as though there is information on, on the internet about them but obviously the equipment they make today is... Um, is quite different to this old uh, old equipment. I don't know how old this is. I'm guessing it's I don't know 1970s or 80s. 
Um, it's obviously pre-digital, but it is a metric set, so that's um, you know that's good for me because I work in metric. Okay, so we'll, look, we'll actually have a go on this in a minute. Now I wanted to have a little bit of practice using some of this various test gear. Um, you know, some of the things that we sh we saw before, like the internal micrometer and the uh, the tele telescoping gauges. I wanted to have a little bit of a practice, and I'm guessing the best thing to use would be um, you know a real measurement standard. You can get kind of uh, these measurement rings, they're just pieces of steel that are bored out and ground and they are to an exact size so you can practice on them and get a feel for it and uh, depending on the, uh, the test, test standard that you can get you can also use them as the reference to set up your other measuring tools but unfortunately some of them, some of them test standards cost well from a few hundred pounds to many thousands of pounds so I didn't want to do that so I was trying to think what could I use to do some measurement on. So what I decided upon was to use a cylinder liner. I bought this because I thought that it would be made to a high tolerance. And I've written down the, uh, some information on it here. This came from the manufacturer's data sheet. So the length of this is 191.360 millimetres. The outer diameter is 94.5 O. The bore size is 90.47 and it's for a Land Rover. Um, it's a diesel Land Rover and I think it said it was for a, a Defender. And the aftermarket part number for anybody who wants to look this up is ERC 9188. So the first way I'm going to try measuring this is just to use uh, you know, my go-to piece of measuring equipment in the shop. This is what I use more than anything else which is this Mitsutoyu and it's uh, just a just a caliper. It's a vernier caliper. Well, I used to call them vernier calipers. It's a digital caliper now, isn't it? Okay, so we've taken the measurements, and this is looking um, a bit odd. Um, so I just measured there, eighty nine point one two, and it says that the uh, the cylinder bore is ninety point four seven. So this bore that I've measured. Is, is smaller it's, and it's actually smaller by quite a large amount it's what's that it's about 1.3 mil which is a yeah it's a it's a non-trivial trivial difference that isn't it so uh, now I'm even more confused so have I got my measurement totally wrong or is this uh, this bore wrong I don't know Okay, so that's given us a reading of 89.4001. Okay, well we've got four measurements and four different readings, so we're off to a good start there. Time to use our old friend Mr. Internal Micrometer. Actually, this is teaching me something already. When I put this uh, in here, I can feel it's tight at the end. It tightens up as I bring it towards this, the end of the, uh, the sleeve. But if I actually put it inside the sleeve, it's a loose fit very loose. In fact it rattles from side to side but when I draw it out it tightens up so I'm guessing that that's telling me that um, the, the measurement must vary depending on where in the sleeve we actually measure. So we've got the uh, 70 extension anvil on it so we know that our reading is going to be 70 and then it's going to be plus 10 because we've got this short 10 mil extension on so we're at least 80 big now we need to add the actual millimetres on and uh, the millimetre count is shown on this little ruler display here so it's going to be 80 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 89 so we've just got to add the final part now which is 4 so I'm getting this as pretty much bang on 89.4 millimetres now, and now unfortunately I've still got a little bit of a hodgepodge of a set of readings here but I did manage to measure 89.4 using the telescoping gauges and I've measured again another 89.4 using the internal micrometer so yeah I'm gunning for 89.4 and as we said that's that's quite different than the uh, 90.4 which uh, is on the manufacturer's data for this cylinder sleeve so 
<laughs> millimeter out. Okay, I think it's finally clicked how to actually use this. And now, now it has clicked. It was so obvious, and I don't know why I was struggling with it earlier. But yeah, everything's easy when you know how to do it, isn't it? So the measurement range that we're are, we're looking for. It's it's uh, I'm going to call it 89.4. So our 89.4, it, it kind of lies between a couple of settings here. So. We've got one that starts at 89.5, well that's a bit big, so the other one goes between 80, 80, 87 to 89.6, I think that's the one we need. And it says we need the A adapter and the number one anvil end, so A1. So I've gone and got A1 out of here and I've installed it onto the, uh, the end of our telescoping gauge, so we've got uh, an adapter which is is number A so I'm sorry it's upside down but you can see we've got our A adapter installed and then the end that we've got on here is the uh, it's the number one end, it's the smallest end that they do so we've got an A adapter and a number one end installed and that should put us in the ballpark for our measurement range now I don't know if I've pointed this out earlier one of the problems with trying to take these internal measurements is that the measuring piece of equipment you use floats around inside the bore and depending on how you hold it um, you get totally different readings so what this is for, these, these ears that stick out, these kind of clamp spring loaded, these clamp against the side of the cylinder and they make the tool centre so again Hopefully it should take some of my shaking around and I think it's designed to take a bit of the feel out of it. Now if I squeeze this clamp assembly it doesn't affect the needle but if I just touch the end pin see it just wangs round there. I said at the very beginning that these bore gauges can't actually take a direct measurement. What they can do is just do a comparison. So what we actually need to do is we need to set up our reference measurement and I think I'm going to go for 89.4 because I'm pretty convinced that the uh, the measurement on here is uh, is to is just totally wrong. It, it's it's rubbish. It shouldn't be 90.47. It should be, well, it, it's I, I reckon it probably should have been something like 89.47. So I think the whole thing's maybe a millimeter out. So I'm going to set my re I'm going to set my reference to 89.4 anyway. So hopefully you can see that we're set to 89.4 now. So this is the bit that I was dreading, it's really fiddly. What we're going to try to do is, we're going to put this, uh, this tool, the bore gauge, we're going to put it between the anvils of the micrometer, and you can see as I squeeze this in, the needle spins round. Well what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to put this in and the needle is going to go up, and as I get this dead in line with the micrometer anvils, the, the dial is going to fall, and then I'm going to go past it and it's going to start to climb up. So I'm looking for the null point. If any of you have used a, a, an old Wayne Bridge oscillator or something like that, or a, one of these resistance meters in the past, you'll all have, uh, be familiar with nulling the bridge. And uh, effectively what we're trying to do is we're trying to null out this uh, dial test indicator to its zero point. And it's really fiddly to do. And I'm Okay, so what I've been doing, I'm hoping you can see, I'm just wiping the uh, the probe of the dial gauge across the anvil of the uh, micrometer, and when it's all dead centred and perfectly in line, the, you see that the needle starts to go up, and then it drops back down again, and the point at which it starts to drop back down, that's the null point. So I think I just need to twist the dial on the uh, dial gauge just a little bit anti-clockwise. Hopefully I will be bang on then. This is really hard to do. Really hard. So that's my zero about there. I'm just ever so slightly wiping the probe across the micrometer anvil very slightly. I'm calling that thing the probe, I'm confusing you. So that's the probe, that's the thing that moves in and out and makes the uh, dial gauge spin round. 
Okay, so I've zeroed out our dial gauge and I've zeroed it out at 98.4. So what it's going to tell us now when we insert it into the bore, it's not going to be a direct reading, it's going to tell us how much above or below 89.4 this bore actually is. Okay, so I'm going to drop this into our bore and I'm going to try and put it in the same place approximately as the other measurements we were taking. And you can see as I put it in, this needle starts to spin round. And what we do is we rock the instrument. Well, I'm going to rock it backwards and forwards a little bit because in theory it's just centering itself now in the bore. And actually taking the reading off it is a lot like setting it. As I move it to one side, you'll see that the needle... So I'm just going to tip it to one side. And now I'm going to straighten it up in the bore. And what you're going to see, you're going to see the needle spin round and then it's going to start going in the opposite direction. At that point that it reverses, that's where we take our reading. So it's going round clockwise, still going round clockwise, still going round clockwise, still going round clockwise, and it's just backed off there, can you see? So I've just dropped the probe of the indicator into the pole. And what I'm doing, I'm just rocking the gauge backwards and forwards now. And you can see the needle climbs up and then it starts to reverse back down again. Well, at the point at which it reverses, that's the reading. So at the moment, it's starting to reverse. And I'm looking, I'm looking at this dial here. Um, it's, it's starting to reverse somewhere between 60 and 70. I'm going off the red markings there where my finger is. It's roughly where it's reversing. But it's strange if I actually just move to a different part of the bore. I get a totally different reading. Now it's reversing here. Now I don't know about you, but I found that very confusing. And I'm not even sure at the moment whether my bore is slightly over uh, the, the the reference of 89.4 is it slightly over bore or is it slightly under bore I'm not sure the numbers were absolutely all over the place so what I've also discovered about this is that depending on where you put the measurement device um, this this uh, bore is obviously slightly oval and not only that is it, it changes massively how deep along the, you take the you take the measurement so it's all over the place this and uh, I don't know if that's normal or not I, I suspect it probably is normal because what you would do is you would press these into the engine which probably does distort them slightly and then you would have to remachine the, the sleeves out I think to get the exact fit that you wanted so I'm sure the fact that I'm getting all these uh, strange and different numbers at the moment maybe isn't that meaningful so what I think I need to do is to actually get something which is a, is a known reference especially while I'm learning to do this because uh, it, it's very hard to do and this this piece of measuring equipment is ridiculously sensitive so I'll just put it in the bore again and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze it like that now this is quite thick metal and quite hard metal so I'll just show you what the effect of just just holding the ball makes so let me uh, get you set up on the needle again so all I'm doing is I'm just put, putting light finger and thumb pressure now between on the outside of the ball that's how sensitive this piece of equipment is God, that needle that needle is really jumping around just from the slightest hand pressure So I think our needle is reversing it around the 20 mark there. So that's telling me that this uh, this bore is actually larger than the uh, the reference that we set, which was 98.4, and it's telling me that um, it's 20 divisions and 20 divisions at 0.01 millimeter. So that's what's that? So it's 0.02 millimeters. So I think that's telling me that the bore size here is 89.42 so now that I've gone deeper I'm getting a totally different reading and I've actually turned the thing round 
and go from side to side again I get a totally different reading. It's almost like you know it's like water dividing where, where you walk along with a couple of cross coat hangers and at some point the needles cross and you go yeah there's water there so yeah it's all about the feel it's all about experience none of which I've got but uh, it was fun.